Okay, this is going to be part two of Prayers in the Bible. The part one um, had a problem with the computer, uh, which has been happening a lot lately, so uh, it stopped. So I'm going to have to do a part two. No big deal. Uh, but we were reading Matthew 24. And Jesus warned and told everybody that when he comes, it would be like the lightning in the sky. And, you know, it, when you see lightning in the sky, I mean, it's, it's visible, okay? It's not like it's going to be the secret thing. But one of the most important verses to warn you whether or not it's the proper Christ or not, Matthew 24, Jesus warned that there'd be false Christ first. Okay? One of the things is, pre-tribbers and the, um, what they call dominionists, generally they're of the Calvinistic persuasion, uh, preterists, they say that almost all Bible prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD. They're awaiting Christ to return. Do you realize that pre-tribbers are waiting for Christ to return? Post-tribbers are waiting for the Antichrist to come before Jesus comes, which is what Jesus warned in Matthew 24. He said false Christ would come first. And he says, as lightning lights up the sky from the east onto the west, you know, everybody would see him. Okay? But this is one, go to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, Chapter 4 and verse 13. One of the most important verses in the Bible, Paul. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. See, when, when Christ comes back, He's bringing all the dead with him, all the dead in Christ, okay? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, um, those who of us who are alive when Christ returns shall not stop those that are, uh, you know, the dead in Christ. We're not going to be able to stop them from coming, okay? Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay? We're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. If that doesn't happen, it's the wrong Messiah. It's the wrong Christ. When Christ comes, we're going to all be gathered together with him in the air when he's coming back with all the dead. Okay? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Pre-tribbers, dominionists, preterists, when the false Christ comes, they're going to be fooled. Matter of fact, there's this guy named Brian Denham, whatever, his name is Husky, something or other, and he says, pre-tribbers and post-tribbers have a different God, and I thought about that. He's right, we do. Their Messiah is going to be the Antichrist. Post-tribbers are waiting for Jesus Christ. Pre-tribbers are waiting for Christ, but it's not going to be this one that Paul writes about. They're going to be fooled terribly. So, let's take a look. In Matthew 24, verse 20, Jesus said, But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Oh, yeah. And none of them, none of the pre-tribbers will pray that prayer. In Matthew 26, 41, Jesus said, Watch and pray 
that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. All right, turn to Luke chapter 21, verse 33. Jesus speaking, heaven and, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And for those that say that the Bible's mistranslated, well, they're calling Jesus a liar, saying his words passed away. Verse 34, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. What's surfeiting? Uh, well, it uh, looks like surfeit, right? That's actually a word. You know, when you catch a wave and you're surfing, you want to, on that wave, you want to surf it. Surfeiting. It means, um, let's say you wanted a candy bar, and you ate five of them to, at the same time. You'd be, uh, surfeiting would mean that you are, you over-consumed, and you don't want to do it anymore. You know, after you've eaten five candy bars, do you really want to eat a sixth one? No. It's like you overdid it, and you've lost your desire for it, at, you know. So, if you were eat five candy bars in a row, you'd be surfeiting your desire for a sixth candy bar. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. What day? The second coming. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So people should be praying that they're accounted worthy to escape the things that are coming and that you're worthy to stand before the Son of Man, which is Christ, right? And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple, and at night he went out and abode in the mount, which is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. Colossians 1.9 For this cause, this is Paul, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.25 Brethren, pray for us. Ooh. Uh, let's see. 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 1 Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. All right, turn to James chapter 5, and then we're going to go to James chapter 2. Or, no, verse uh, James chapter 1, after verse 5. Uh, I'm sorry, James chapter 5, verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. All right, go to James chapter 1. All right, James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom. The difference between knowledge and wisdom is you could have a lot of knowledge, okay, a lot of facts. You may know a lot of things, but having wisdom is knowing how to apply it properly. Okay, so... You might know about the Bible, but having knowledge is being able to apply it properly. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. How do you ask of God? In prayer. 
If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of a God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We should be asking the Lord for wisdom in prayer. All right, well, that's uh, this is the end of the uh, this Bible study. And um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. In his precious name, amen. This is the end of prayer, part two.